Hi, today we're in the North York Moors National Park. I'm staying at Middlesbrough. Just got two nights. It's the first week when we've been able to travel uh, since all the various lockdowns. The hotels are now open for leisure use. So I've just come away just for a Friday and a Saturday night. I have to be back for Monday morning to carry on making a living. But it's, it's great to be in a different habitat. And all I'm doing is just picking on a spot that looks like it's open moorland and just driving around hoping to do car window photography. This should be golden plover, red grouse, curlews, lapwings. Well the first thing I came across was a red legged partridge. I would rather it was a grey partridge. There are some photographers who won't photograph red legged partridge because they regard them as a, a chicken or no more than a chicken. They were introduced into this country and released in big numbers for shooting. A couple of stills pictures of it. Shame it was standing on one leg. Notice the branch in the top right hand corner. It was better if the bird faced that and then I could recompose the picture to put the bird to the left and include the branch. I felt that looked better from a composition point of view. While I'm photographing the partridge I was aware that lapwings were calling on the other side of the stone wall and I've always said this about wildlife, you see and become aware of wildlife far more when you're sitting still than if you're moving. And that's whether you're driving the car or walking, it's better to keep still. I'm using the curt door mount here to support the video head, it's not perfect, I'm still looking for the best way of shooting video out of the car window. A beanbag is best for stills pictures but not so good for video. You can tell that that lapwing is sitting on young rather than eggs because its weight's fluffed up around the front. And whenever you see a lapwing sitting in a field, you straight away you can tell whether it's sitting on eggs or just sitting. Um, just it's just the way they sit, which you just get used to, I think. Eventually one of the birds did pop out, but this rain is not good for young wader chicks. When they're fluffy like this, if they get wet, they will chill. And that's not good for their survival chances. And it's not just the rain, but the wet grass as well. Typically lapwings will have three or four eggs and this one seems to have three chicks. I think it's better if the female can keep them in this short grass. If they get into long grass they'll get even wetter. My favourite British bird, the lapwing, simply because it was the first bird I ever identified as a, as a child. When you get out onto the moorland proper, there's an extensive network of roads and you're just driving along slowly, finding little pull-ins where you can sit and wait. Here there was a lot of heather and a gorse bush and a linnet was singing away. Probably the female is on the nest somewhere in that gorse and the male will sit on top of the gorse and sing for hours on end. But you just drive around slowly and whenever you see a suitable pull-in you just park the car and sit there for a few minutes and watch to see what's going on. Meta Pipid. I'll show you a couple of stills pictures I took of this Meta Pipid. Now I never used to crop my pictures but now that I'm using the Sony A1 I'm trying to shoot things small in the frame because the files are so huge that 8640 pixels on the longest edge. So I'm now willing to crop because I can crop the picture very aggressively and still end up with a file larger than I used to get with my Canon cameras or my Olympus cameras that I still use. And there's many advantages to shooting the birds small in the frame. Skylarks sitting amongst the grasses. I always think they're better sitting on top of a post. Of course they sing in the air a lot, but sometimes you will get them on a song post, singing their hearts out. And another large wader that you find on the moorlands is the curlew. Very noisy bird, you certainly know they're there in the spring. Here is feeding on a farm field. but they're more likely to be breeding in the long heather on the moors. But very often during the spring months they will be quite close to the road. 
This is one of the stills pictures I took on the trip. I think this is the case with all waders. They have this thing about their, their breed out there somewhere, but when they've got young, they tend to come to the edges of the road, especially early in the morning when there's no traffic. So it's very common to see snipe, lapwings, golden plovers, curlews, close to the edge of the road, where they're photographable. This is a male lapwing. He's got a longer crest and darker markings on the face. And he's got young birds close by, so he's keeping an eye on them. But all day long, you're coming across curlews and lapwings very close to the edge of the road. It's one of the chicks. And a few stills pictures. As you're driving along the moorland roads, you notice these white sticks. They're very common all over. If you get out and walk up to them, there's a tray underneath and it's full of grit. And this is for the red grouse. The red grouse gets some parasites, so the grit is treated with a medicine to help reduce the parasites. I didn't do very well with red grouse pictures. I think they're usually easier to photograph in February, March, when they're setting up the territories. That's the female, more sort of goldeny coloured. And a male that was partially hidden away. That's the first red grouse that I've been close enough to. I've seen plenty of them, but they've all been very distant. Most places in the late winter, early spring, they tend to come very close to the roads, almost as if they use the road as a natural line dividing up the territories. There's a male and a female wandering about. And slightly further away, I can hear the golden plover. It's a beautiful call. In two days in this park, this is the first time I've got out of the car to walk. And I know this area very well. I spent at least a week here a few years ago photographing ring goosles. There's probably more ring goosles in this area in England than anywhere else in the country. They were very common. You could hear them singing as you walked along. I found three nests in about a week. And um, yeah, I did get some good pictures. You're not usually doing ring goosles out of the car window. Not so, not so easy, apart from in the autumn when they start landing on the berries, but not in the spring. So when I was here, this was doing hide work. I'll just put one picture in of a ring goosel I took here, whenever it was. This is a male and has to be my favourite of the British thrushes. I don't think there's a, another national park in the UK that's got so many quiet open moorland roads. I mean it's a complete maze of roads. Every now and then I'm recognising something I've been past before but most of the time it's just new. Every road I'm driving up is new. Some are definitely better than others from a photography point of view but it's extensive, a massive area to do car window photography from. I'll finish off with some pictures of Kittiwakes that I took in Scarborough. I only ended up in Scarborough because there's a shortage of fish and chip shops on the moors. And I'd never come across this before, but they have a colony of Kittiwakes on this bridge and it reminded me very much of Dunbar Harbour in Scotland, where Kittiwakes are very easy to photograph on the walls around the harbour. Here, perhaps a bit too high for photographing on the nest, but it's very interesting to see them collecting nest material. And this was going on for several hours and a lot of activity. I really enjoyed filming it and trying to take stills pictures of it too. So I'm using the Sony A1 with the 200 to 600 zoom lens and you're just trying to isolate a bird. Find one by itself 
so there's no distractions there and then the autofocus is absolutely stunning on this camera and it locks onto them almost every time. It is far superior to any other autofocus camera I've owned but I'm still hoping that Olympus are going to catch up. I'm reluctant to sell my Olympus equipment, I enjoy using it too much. Thanks for watching.